Peace! What's happening, good people? This Get Fed for Pay Us No Mind. And today, what we're talking about is YouTube monetization. Specifically, the difference between monetizing directly and monetizing through Content ID, right? Now, for those that don't know how Content ID works, right? Content ID, they create a digital fingerprint of your audio file. And then they scan YouTube to identify and, to, and, try, and try to basically match that fingerprint to other audio files that are used in YouTube videos. And when it finds a match, it identifies the song as containing your song and claims that video on your behalf and pays you the ad revenue generated by that video, right? So... It's a digital fingerprint, scans YouTube till it finds a match, claims that video, and collects the ad revenue and pays it out to you. So they call that third-party content or user-generated content. So it's like you upload a video directly to YouTube yourself. That is two parties, you and YouTube. You upload your music to YouTube, and then I get a hold of your music and upload it to my and, and, and upload it to uh youtube and my music video i'm a third party you youtube and me third party right now if i'm not authorized to upload your music to youtube your content id provider will claim my video on your behalf and pay you the ad revenue generated from my video right and that's the way content id works now Content ID providers like Audium and like uh, your digital distributor, which most have content ID programs themselves, right? They take a percentage of the money that they collect from content ID on your behalf, right? The digital distributors might take 30%. Some take that much, right? Some take 20%, 25 Audium takes 25%. So you're sacrificing a percentage of your revenue and having distributors or a content id provider collect revenue on your behalf right now the content now direct partnerships with youtube pay you 55 percent of ad revenue so that's how much youtube pays 55 percent of ad revenue so if you go through a content id provider it's the percentage of ad revenue youtube pays out to its partners minus whatever the digital distributor or the content ID provider takes from you. So if the partnership with YouTube by your distributor or your content ID provider is 55%, then you get, they pay the distributor or the content ID provider 55% and then that distributor or content ID provider takes their 25 or 30% and then pay you the remainder. And that's the way that shops down, right? Now, the thing about content ID is that it only monetizes your music videos, right? Whatever music video you submit for content ID tracking. So with like a TuneCore, it's whatever songs you distribute through TuneCore that get monetized, right? Uh, with Di DistroKid, same thing. Whatever songs you, you distribute through DistroKid get monetized, right? You're not monetizing anything else but the song. You know, it's just the song. And it's mainly for third-party usage, right? Like... If somebody uploads your video to YouTube, that's what content ID is for. Not you, right? Yourself. And that is the difference between uploading directly and content ID. When you upload directly, or not uploading directly, but direct monetization, right? When you monetize directly with YouTube and the partner program, right? You are monetizing your uploads, right? And you get 55% of ad revenue from your uploads. And you don't have to split, split that ad revenue with anyone else. You keep 100% of it. So you don't have to split it with a content ID provider. You don't have to split it with YouTube, with uh, your digital distributor. You keep that all to yourself. Nobody else takes a piece of it. It's all yours, right? And that's the way it works with direct uploads now or direct monetization. Now with direct monetization, you know, you got to go through the process of joining the YouTube partner program. And a lot of times, man, artists don't even know the process of doing that. You know, 
if you've ever been inside your YouTube dashboard, you know, on the sidebar, you'll see, uh, uh, like if you scroll down, you'll see your monetization tab. You click that monetization tab and it'll take you to the area where you go to set, sign up for the YouTube partner program. You know, and you sign up and you create an AdSense account, which is YouTube's advertising arm, you know, where where basically uh, content providers use AdSense to run ads and that's what they, where they get paid and everything like that. So to get paid from the ads running on your videos, you need to have an AdSense account, you know, so you got to create the AdSense account to monetize your video. So that's part of it. Right. And then the other part is, you know, filling out the form for YouTube. And then once you fill out that form. There is the other uh, aspect of it, which is the monetization threshold, right? YouTube now imposes a threshold where you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours watched in order to monetize. And that is where content ID gets brought back into the fold, right? Because even if, you know, you want to monetize directly, you might not be able to if you haven't reached the monetization threshold. So if you haven't reached the monetization threshold, then you have to use Content ID to monetize your channel, right? Which means not only are you using Content ID to monetize third party content, but you are also using it to monetize your own channel, right? And you have to recognize that too, that entering into Content ID, if content ID agreements, if you don't white list your channel, your videos will be clean. And that is a good thing if you haven't reached the monetization threshold and you want your videos to be clean. And a bad thing if you don't want your videos to be clean because you you are in a partner program because your videos will be clean. So you want to make sure if you are in a pro partner program that you whitelist your channel with your digital distributor when you sign up for content ID. And if you get a claim and you know that that's not something that you want, then you just have to reach out to your digital distributor and let them know, hey, you know, uh, I don't want you monetizing my channel and they'll whitelist it or whatever, you know, so you work that out like that. Now, another drawback to content ID and also to not reaching the monetization threshold, because some artists will look at it and say that monetizing through the content ID is enough, right? The music gets monetized and that's what really matters, right? But there's other drawbacks too. things like, you know, being able to link to your own website. And your YouTube video like YouTube has certain things like cards and end screens that allow you to, you know, promote content on your website, merch, physical products like vinyl, CDs, stuff like that, where you might want to send people to your website to buy, you know, even if you want to send them to join your mailing list, something like that. Right. You cannot link to your website if you're not in a partner program. You know, so that's one drawback that you can't link to your website, your own website, if you're not in a partner program. Another drawback is the fact that you can't take advantage of things like super chats and the stickers and stuff that YouTube allows people to buy in the chat room. So if you are an artist and you want to live stream concerts or you want to um, live stream yourself making a beat, anything you can imagine, you know, do a live stream interview with your fans, anything. You cannot take advantage of Super Chats in any way without being in the partner program. Even though that's not advertising, they still restrict you from doing that. And YouTube reported that people are making around $400 a minute from Super Chats. You know, so, I mean, it's a valuable thing that you would ideally want to take advantage of if you could, you know. So, you get restricted from some stuff if you're not in a partner program, you know, and there is more to monetizing than just monetizing your songs. You know, you upload in multiple and different types of videos to your channel. It might not just be music, right? It might be video behind the scenes footage. It might be, you know, interviews. It might be you talking about what inspired a song. It might be you talking about your personal life. It could be anything. And if you are monetizing, through a partner, through the partner program, then all of your content gets monetized. Like everything you upload to YouTube gets monetized. If you are just doing content ID, it's just the songs and that's it, right? Now there's a lot of different uh, ways to monetize on YouTube, right? There's art tracks, topic videos, all of these different types of stuff, you know, where artists can kind of get confused about what's what 
you know, and that's why I did the book, you know, Guide to YouTube Monetization for Artists That Don't Want to Be YouTubers, even though that's for a particular type of person, you know, that doesn't want to be a party to the YouTube thing and they just want their music there and for people to consume it. The book still kind of explains all these different types of monetization pathways and how they work and stuff like that, you know, so it's still worth getting to kind of like understand it, you know, so you know, okay, well, here's how this works, here's how that works, so you know which pathway will probably work best for you. You know, so I definitely recommend you getting that book if you're kind of confused about it. You know, direct uploads, content ID, this, that, and the third. You know, it's definitely worth the read, man. But yeah, you know, content ID, you just monetize your song, right? Digital distributor or your content ID provider will take a percentage of whatever you paid, you know. Um, It does the digital fingerprint thing. It scans YouTube for third-party content, matches it, collects royalties from other people, which also, you know, could negatively impact organic promotion because if people are uploading your music to YouTube to promote it, right, and they get claims, then that could discourage people from uploading your video. And if you need that promotion, then the pennies that you would get from the content ID might not be worth it, right? So you got to look at that aspect of content ID as well. Direct uploads, you can't do content ID, right? You can't monetize other videos, but you can monetize your own and all of the videos on your channel. And as, you know, as well as take advantage of super chats and link directly on your website to your website and all of those things. So that's the benefit of direct monetization through YouTube versus content ID. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, make sure you share, comment if you got any questions, man. You know, if you want to know about anything about content ID, any, anything about monetizing directly, you know, uh, you want to talk about uh, the negative impacts in regards to promotion, you know, and, 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 and what's your take on that? I'm interested in hearing that, you know. Until next time, y'all, this is GIF signing off. Pay us no mind. Peace, good people. One.